From the universe to the atom, things exist on many scales. Although you're familiar with objects on the macro scale, a lot of chemistry is going on at the nano scale. Can you believe that silver, commonly seen as shiny and metallic, can turn blue, yellow, or even red? These are properties of silver nanoparticles, individual particles of silver smaller than the smallest bacteria. Let's take a glimpse into the details of the nano world. Making silver nanoparticles isn't as hard as you may think. We're going to need four main reagents, a reducing agent to convert oxidized silver ions to silver, a stabilizing agent to restrict the size of the silver nanoparticles produced, a buffer solution to maintain a constant pH, and a source of silver ions. We used sodium borohydride as a reducing agent. The stabilizing agent was potassium bromide and sodium citrate provided the optimal pH. Our source of silver ions was silver nitrate. After we combined these four chemicals, we left it to finish reacting for 10 minutes. But what can silver nanoparticles do that normal silver can't do? By tuning the size and residues on the silver nanoparticles, it can be engineered to deliver drugs in medicine, catalyze many reactions, and improve the lifetime and efficiency of batteries. In our experiments, we tested their reductive properties using the reduction of 4-nitrophenol to 4-aminophenol. Ultraviolet spectroscopy allowed us to study the rate of this reaction over time. We used two different catalysts, silver nitrate and silver nanoparticles. When we plotted absorbance at 450 nanometers over time, the sample with silver nanoparticles showed a steeper slope, proving that absorbance decreased faster. We know that absorbance is proportional to the concentration of 4-nitrophenol. Therefore, silver nanoparticles cause these particles to react at a faster rate, demonstrating the catalytic power of silver nanoparticles. Nanoparticle size can be changed by adding different amounts of potassium bromide as they form. The bromide ions will react with the silver ions on the surface of the nanoparticles and form solid silver bromide. Silver bromide is not very soluble, so they remain on the surface of the silver nanoparticles, blocking the sites for further aggregation, restricting the size of nanoparticles produced. As the concentration of potassium bromide increases, the size decreases. Amazingly enough, different sized nanoparticles will appear as different colors. Only a very small concentration of potassium bromide in the microliter range is needed to affect color. Even though nanoparticles are smaller than the wavelength of visible light, they can still absorb energy from light by a mechanism called surface plasma resonance. This can be tested using a technique called dynamic light scattering. This involves shining a laser into a solution of nanoparticles and observing the way they scatter light. Large particles move more slowly and scatter light more slowly. However, when we apply this technique, we observe something very strange. Nanoparticle size appeared to increase when potassium bromide was added, and not the other way around. This shows one of the challenges of science. Experiments can contradict each other and weird things can happen. This is why many experiments are performed before treating something as fact. For our experiment, further analysis is required. And that was just a glimpse into the fascinating world of nanoscience. There's a lot left to learn.